Hi everyone and welcome to Autism Hope Education Page. Oh my goodness, you're going to love, love, love our next guest. Um, I just think he is awesome. Uh, his name is Joe Carr. Thank you so much for being here, Joe. Great to be here. Thanks. Well, before we get started, can you briefly tell us a little bit about why you're so passionate about our subject, which is thriving as an autistic adult? Sure. Well, I'm an autistic adult who's thriving, and it was not always this way. <laughs> yeah, I had a very difficult childhood. I was not diagnosed with autism until college. So as a kid, they didn't know what was wrong with me. I had this really big, intense energy, you had a really hard time making friends, was always in trouble at school, and a lot of you know physical and digestive issues and that followed me all throughout into adulthood you know it took i had a really difficult time dating uh you know i've always wanted children and was just like sad every night i'd go to bed alone feeling like i'm never gonna have the family i want i you know i can't seem to get a girlfriend or, or keep a relationship um, i was fired from most of the jobs that i've ever had you know mostly for either some kind of minor dress code infraction or something or or for rocking the boat i was always trying to change things make it better and a lot of bosses don't like you telling them how to do their job better um mm -hmm. you know and uh and so my career wasn't really going anywhere and like I just was was having a really difficult time and I learned through a series of, of practices to harness my autistic gifts and limit my challenges and create a uh, thrive the thriving life I have now. I have an amazing wife, um, a gorgeous new daughter. She's 15 months old now. Uh, we started a baby food company together that is becoming one of the fastest growing baby food companies in the country, um, you know, making lots of money. Uh, I get to, to work with autistic adults and I launched a website and blog called ospiepower.com where I'm, you know, helping other autistic people thrive. And so I'm just really passionate about this idea that we can, we can contribute a lot to the world, that autistic people have a lot to contribute. And there's a lot of things the world needs to do to make it a safer place for us. And we can be a part of that change, but there's a lot of things we can do um, and also I think parents and families can do to support um, an autistic adult and, 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 and not just getting by, not just surviving, but really thriving. And so you talk about where your life was, you talk about where your life is now. Um, and it sounds like your life is doing amazing, which I absolutely love. Um, what is your relationship with your autism though right now? Yeah. So my everything changed a lot when I decided that to embrace autism. When I said, you know what, this is a part of who I am. I'm not going to hide it. I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to pretend it's not there. I'm going to learn a lot about it. I'm going to connect with other artistic people. I'm going to tell people in my life, this is who I am. This is why I have this challenge. This is what maybe I need and, you know, really embrace it. So now I feel like I've Integra fully integrated autism into my life as a piece of who I am, just like I'm a man, I'm an American, you know, I'm a performer, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm autistic, like it's a part of my being that I will be forever. And I'm and I'm proud to be. And so do you still face any challenges like you did back when? You oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not like it's easy. You know, life's not easy for anyone. But, you know, all the challenges are still there. You know, I've learned how to mitigate them, you know, um, and we can talk in a minute about the specific, you know, tips and tricks that I've learned, but I still every day have challenges with social, with social skills, you know, with my team at work, with, with my wife, you know, with my friends, like I, you know, those are still an issue. I still have a lot of physical gut sensitivities and issues. Like I have a, to follow a pretty strict diet um, without, you know, getting really upset. I still have to manage anxiety all the time. You know, like I'll go into anxious fear state pretty fast. I can still get overwhelmed by stimulation. So I have to be mindful of environments I'm in and how overwhelming they are. So that just to name a few. So it doesn't ever go away, but I've learned how to do the best to manage that and to spend most of my energy emphasizing my gifts and creating a life that, that emphasizes that and mitigates the challenges. Now, how has autism benefited you and helped you succeed of what you have today? Yeah. So, you know, uh, I think that one of the defining traits of autism is sensitivity, is how sensitive we are. 
you know, and sometimes that's a real challenge because we live in a loud, bright, intense world where we're overwhelmed with stimulation all the time. So we can get overwhelmed really fast. Um, but I think the sensitivity is a real gift also because I can really uh, feel real subtleties of nuances, whether it's in an idea, in a conversation, or in another person, that I learned how to use my sensitivity as a connection superpower that instead of being disconnected from people or, or uh, avoiding intimacy, uh, I've actually learned to, to really allow myself to feel people and really allow them to feel me, that I project feelings to them. And that if I, once I realized that I, that was a superpower and that I knew how to do that, that really changed my relationships. So I ended up working with a dating coach when I was dealing with a relationship, which is one of the tips I have is like seek out basically relationship coaching um, for adults or kids have different kind of opportunities. But, you know, like dating coaches are great because they teach you how to emphasize what your natural attractive aspects are. And they helped me realize that, oh, one of my real strengths is that I can feel a person you know, or in this case, a woman. And like women love to be felt like they, you know, so many men try to communicate with their, with their words or they try to analyze women or they try to fix problems. And, you know, a lot of women just want to be felt by a man. And that was something that I was naturally very good at uh, to just be with them on an emotional level and, and, and to communicate that way, to, to project my feelings to them. And once I stopped trying to do it right and like used like the, the, the social tricks to try to, you know, get their attention, which might've worked briefly, but wasn't sustainable. Once I learned to like really allow that deep intimacy, which was also uncomfortable because it's so, I feel it so much when they're upset with me, I feel it really deeply, you know, but I learned how to just like really be with that um, through mindfulness practice, which is another really powerful tool uh, of, you know, meditation and um, learning to, you know, I, I, did a, a dialectical behavioral therapy program, DBT, um, which is a really powerful program that teaches a lot of mindfulness skills and a lot of uh, emotion regulation and um, interpersonal skills and really just breaks down all those skills that seem natural for everyone else. It teaches us how to do them. Um, and uh, that really taught me how to like be with my physical sensations, how to recognize what emotions I was feeling, learned how to speak, set boundaries and say no to certain things, learn how to ask for what I want in a more clear way, how to identify what I want, right? So that's DBT, really powerful. And, and then mindfulness, a big piece of that. So meditation and other, and yoga and mindfulness practices that just slow me down and have me be with myself, be with my body, be with where I am. It really helps when I get overwhelmed because I can like channel out all of the sensation and just be with myself and just be present there and really helps calm my anxiety. Yeah. Do you have any advice um, other than meditation and being mindful um, for other autistic adults that might be watching? I love the advice on the dating coach. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, diet's a huge one. You know, like we're sensitive on a molecular level. So when we eat things that are allergens or are irritating to our gut or inflammatory, you know, which are commonly things like gluten possibly all grains, sugars, processed foods, GMOs, um, you know, th uh, industrial seed oils, you know, dyes, things like that uh, can, can really uh, make all the symptoms worse, you know? And so if we're trying to like mitigate those challenges and emphasize gifts, taking away these irritation, these irritants is a really big first step. And really for me helped I got felt a lot calmer. Like I wasn't nearly as on edge. You know, I have to really, really manage caffeine. Like I still drink a little bit of coffee, but I do like a half calf, half decaf blend in the morning and that's it. You know, um, really have to, to monitor alcohol or any other kind of drugs. Like that's just like, I'm so sensitive to that stuff. So I have to really be mindful of like what I put in my body and put a lot more attention on it than most people. You know, like I put a lot more, I spend more money and more time on food than, than, than most people do, but I'm not most people, right? Like I'm autistic. I, this is what, this is one of the things I need to do, but it's so worth it. Um, and then another thing that's been really powerful is uh, Chinese medicine is acupuncture and Chinese herbs. And my, uh, 
acupuncturist said my pulse went from a stockbroker to a Zen priest in a matter of several months, just from regular treatment and really good herbs. Like she prescribed, um, you know, these Chinese herbs that are all about calming and soothing and focus and all the things I was struggling with. So finding a really good um, acupuncturist who also um, works with, with herbs and playing around with that, monitoring, figuring out dosages and, you know, tri trial and error, of course, is anything. But, but now I go to acupuncture regularly, take herbs every day. Um, there's other great supplements, you know, as far as um, omega-3s and GABA and um, other kind, you know, L-theanine and some, some more Western style supplements that help too. But, you know, that's the, that's medicine for me. Like there's no drug for autism, you know, like we can't, take a drug, we can, you know, like maybe some other, um, you know, like depression or, or psych, psych, psychosis issues where they can maybe stabilize the brain through drugs. Like we can't do that. Like we have to stabilize it through these natural mediums and, uh, you know, understanding the role of energy and chi uh, that, that acupuncture really works with has been super helpful for me. Um, I've also played around a little bit with martial arts. I'm not a big martial artist, but I think there's, you know, Tai Chi and some of the more mindfulness focused energy work I've seen be really powerful for autistic people because we're just big balls of energy, you know, like we're feeling electricity all the time. Sometimes it's ours, sometimes it's not ours. We're getting it from somewhere else or who, from who knows where. So learning how to channel that energy and electricity into something productive and positive is what's really helped me thrive. And so what advice do you have for loved ones that have children on the spectrum or adults on the spectrum uh, to help them thrive in the way that you're talking other than all the amazing tips you've already given? Do you have any? Other totally. Tips? Yeah. So, you know, believing in them is one of the first biggest steps, you know, like my mom really believed in me and found, you know, the performing arts where, where I excelled and got me in there and really fed that passion. Um, and my wife, you know, now like just does not allow me to be like a victim or uh, powerless, you know, I'll, I'll get whiny and feel like I'm a victim and like, I can't do this or this person's, you know, messing all this up, you know, and she's just like, doesn't accept that. Like, she's like, no, you're very, super powerful. Like you can handle that. Like you can do it, you know? And like, so like pushing me when needed, you know, and also having a lot of compassion for some things are harder. I'll get down on myself, you know, I'll say mean things about myself. Oh, I'm stupid. Or man, I'm just, why did I forget that appointment? Or how could I mess that up? You know, and she can be like, this is, that's, you know, you're not stupid. This is harder for you. You know, like this is something that is harder for you. Doesn't mean you don't have to do it, but like, I understand that this is harder. So just having compassion that there are certain things that are harder and re reminding us of that sometimes is like, I recognize this is harder while also being willing to push us and challenge us when we get into that disempowered victim state which all people fall into at some point. But I think, you know, the, how much harder life is for us sometimes can really let, lead to uh, I'm broken, I'm a victim, I can't do it idea. And, um, you know, I think loved ones go a long way in challenging that and saying, I don't accept that about you. You know, like I believe you can do it. And yeah, it's harder for you. And I have compassion for that. And I'm not going to, you know, accept that you can't. I love that advice. And now how do people find more about you and they want to follow you and they want to learn more? How do they find sure. you? You can read more about my story and about my general beliefs at aspiepower.com, A-S-P-I-E power.com. And you can learn more about our, my wife and I's baby food company at myserenitykids.com. Really delicious, nutrient dense uh, purees and pouches that great for anyone who likes purees as well as, well as babies. I got to say your family is so beautiful. I follow you guys on Facebook and all your adventures and your daughters are so cute. And so <laughs> I love that, you, you know, you are definitely thriving and you just have such a beautiful family. So congratulations to that, Joe. Thanks so much. And I love your advice at the end there of telling moms and dads and caregivers and anybody in the village, right? Uh, Anyone who will listen, just don't stop believing in your kids. Believe that they can be anywhere and they're capable of limitless growth. And I just absolutely love that. So thank you so much for being here today, Joe. Thanks so much. And thank you guys for watching. Until next time. Bye, guys.